Hello guys, so I went ahead here and made this game object, and I got it called World Interactables. And under that I have the items placed in there, so I'm going to go ahead and create another empty game object, and I'm just going to call this... He's called fog walls or fog wall, whatever you want, but it will be the parent object that just holds onto our fog walls. All right, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and put it around the area of this door, just where my boss entranceway is. And I got this particle effect I'm going to drop in here that I've just pulled over from another project and hastily made just for something to be put into the door. And I'm going to quickly resize this and then drop back in in a second when it's fit up to the door. Okay, there we go. That's going to do the trick. So I'm going to unpack the prefab and uh, I'm just going to add onto a box collider on top of this. And I'm going to size the box collider so it is roughly the size of the entryway of this doorway. So I will be back momentarily because I think this has gone to... Okay, yeah, we don't want it, don't want it that big. So maybe I'll just reset all the transforms here. One, one, one. There we go. And I'm just going to actually reset the location of it to zero, zero, and zero. Okay, now we're working with something. So you want it where it's the size of the entryway, but pushed a little inward. Uh, you'll see why momentarily. We're going to use another collider that will actually act, a, act as an interactable object that we can jump through. And we want to put that just before the actual physical collider that blocks us from going in. All right, that looks good. There we go. Okay. And the reason why we're using two colliders is because we want to be able to go into the fog wall only from one side. We don't want to be able to leave the fog wall, only go into the fog wall. So let's create a script on this, and let's call it fog wall. And this will act as our actual physical wall that blocks uh, from one side. This will not be the entryway, which will be a separate script. So let's erase the start and update functionality. Let's begin by staying awake. And we're going to say game object dot set active is equal to false. So we don't want this to be to be enabled rather, unless we're doing it um, via the boss event and such. So we're gonna say public void, activate fog wall. And all we're going to do is say game object dot set active is equal to true. Now we're gonna make a, another function called deactivate fog wall. And we're gonna say game object dot set active is equal to false. And again, this will only be turned on and off depending on the world event manager. So when you kill a boss, it will be disabled. Uh, when you start a boss fight, it will be enabled. And if you've already started the boss fight and the cutscene is played, there will be a fog wall where you can re-enter um, to fight the boss again. So let's say public list. I'm just going to make a public list of fog walls. And I'm just going to call it fog walls in case you have multiple in your scene. Uh, maybe you do. So I'm just going to kind of make the support for multiple in case you have multiple entrance ways or whatever. And we're going to say, we're going to make a for each loop. And we're going to say for each fog wall in the fog walls collection. Uh, very straightforward. We're just going to say fogwall dot activate fogwall and that's it so we're referencing this list up here and it will run through the list and for every fogwall you have added that list you will activate them all so we'll close out every other area and we can just copy this down here right now we can paste this and just say uh, deactivate fogwall when the boss has been defeated okay excellent let's just save that now and now let's add uh, let's make the list size one because I just have the one fogwall let's drag this under here like so and as you can see right now, it's it's roughly the size of the door. What I'm gonna do is actually move it forward. I mean, uh, this is the this is the boss event collider, so right at the fog wall. So you can see they're in the same location. We actually want the boss event collider to be pushed ahead of the fog wall. Otherwise, when you start the boss fight, the fog wall will push you back out. So as you can see now, uh, the event collider that starts the boss fight is just ahead of the of the um, the fog wall collider. So if I walk in, uh, you will see. I start the boss fight and then the wall closes behind me. If I have those on top of each other, what will happen is you'll get pushed out of the fog wall and you'll probably get pushed back behind it instead of being actually in the arena. You don't want that. So make sure your event trigger from the last video is placed more inside the arena. All right, so moving onward, looking good so far, let's create another empty game object under the uh, fog particles. Let's call this the fog entrance. And I'm gonna move that back just a little bit. We're gonna add a box collider uh, component to this again. And we can actually copy um, the component box collider of the other one here and paste the transforms and just move it back and make it maybe a bit thinner. So I'm going to push it back a little bit here now. Uh, no, that's the height. Whoops, that's the length. I knew that. Z, there we go, the thickness. Let's make it honestly kind of paper thin. You don't need it very thick. 
Uh, this is all just preference though. It'll still work either way. And you want to make it so it's just behind your um, your actual fog wall collider. So just right in front of it. So you come up, you get stuck on the actual collider, but then you have the option to be inside this other collider, um, this, this weird interactable. And we're going to add a script to this called pass through fog wall. Now, if you remember a very long time ago when we were doing items, we actually made our items, um, we made it an interactable object to pick up the item. And it derives from the, from the class interactable. So we're going to be using that class once again because for any action button in the game, like opening doors, pulling levers, et cetera, et cetera, we're going to be using that class. So let's make pass through fog wall derive from interactable. I think it's just called interactable. Yes, it is. Now on that, uh, we're referencing our player manager, I believe, which holds all of our interactable um, functionality. First, let's call upon our world event manager, and we can say in awake we can find that. Um, find game object of type because there should only be one in the world at any given time. So we'll say world event manager equals find object of type world event manager. And then we can go down here and let's do a public override on our uh, interact. We can run the base if you'd like. I think that just gives us the bug log. that says we've interacted. You don't have to though. Now we want to go to our player manager. Let's go down to where we have all of our interactable functionality written up just down here below all these updates. Here we go, player interactions. Now we have check for interactable object, that's good. And we have open chest interactions. Well, let's make another function. We're gonna call this public void. Um, let's just call it pass through fog wall interactable or interaction. And all we wanna pass for this is again a transform because we need to make sure when we go to run to the fog wall, we're facing the direction of the fog wall entrance. Otherwise, um, when we play the animation, we didn't walking or jumping in the other direction and then that would look really silly. So you want to make sure your player is rotating towards the forward direction. And you can tell that forward direction is because it's this blue arrow here. Do you see this? So if your blue arrow is not facing in towards the arena, like maybe you have it rotated, you want to rotate it so that it is. Because if I check out, if I rotate this wall right now and then I go back, this is the new forward direction. So you want to make sure that your blue arrow is facing in towards your arena because that's the direction we're going to play the animation at. Uh, because we're actually going to play an animation that puts us to the wall and we're going to temporarily disable our colliders. So um, with that being said, let's also start by freezing our velocity at zero so the player does not ice skate. We stop when we perform this action. Let's then say vector three rotation direction is equal to the uh, fog wall entrance dot transform dot forward. And that is good. Okay, cool. And now let's right below that. We're going to say quaternion. We're going to call this uh, turn rotation is equal to quaternion dot look rotation at the rotation direction. So we're looking at the wall and that's going to rotate our player. And then we're just going to say transform dot rotation equals turn rotation. Now, um, I will add something in the future to smooth this out, like make the player turn over time because right now it's going to make him turn very sharply. You can do that yourself if you'd like. I'm not going to spend time right now playing with values to make it look smoother. Um, it's very straightforward. So I'll just put a note there for now. We can come back to that. When we do some more polish. So let's say player animator manager dot play target animation pass through fog and we are interacting. Once we're in this, we are locked in. So let's make that true. Let's save that. Now I have an animation created for this. I'm going to drag it into the game here momentarily. Um, let's wait for this to save and compile first. Now let's look up player animator manager and we got to make a function to go on top of this animation and the function, as I just stated before, it's going to temporarily disable our collider so we can pass through the collider of the fog wall. Um, now, in theory, when we're doing this, we shouldn't be able to be hit by an enemy. But if you want to, on my solo project, I enabled invulnerability while doing this. So it's like you get the rolling effect if you can't be damaged. Because we want to be locked in this animation. We don't want anything else to take us out of it. So let's say public void disable collision. And this is just going to be really straightforward. And we'll say public void enable collision. We're going to use animation events for this. So... On the first one, we're going to reference the player locomotion. We're going to say player locomotion dot character collider dot enabled equals false. And then we're going to say player locomotion dot character collision blocker uh, dot enabled equals false because that's the other collider that stops you from hitting other players and being able to push each other. Now we'll copy and paste that down here and we'll set those as true. Okay, that's good. And now all there's left to do in terms of this is to actually uh, reference this on our um, pass through fog wall. So we'll say player manager dot pass through fog wall interaction and we'll pass the transform of just this transform. And we're good. That's all set up. Now we need to drag in our animation and make sure we have the animation events set up on that. Uh, also the interactable text here, I'm just going to put uh, pass through fog. There we go. Excellent. 
And oh, set the tag is interactable. Otherwise, you will not be able to um, interact with it. I do believe we had to do that with our items as well. So make sure the tag for the entrance is set to interactable. Now I'm going to bring in this animation here, uh, pass through fog. And as you can see, it's a silly jump. I get off Miaximo. Um, it's actually hard to find just an animation where a guy walks 10 steps because usually all walking animations are looped. So they're very short and not long enough. But this will do the trick. So over here next to our, uh, I guess, our, our little actions here, I'm just going to make a line back to the empty state. I'm going to go to the player model now and go and open up the animation window. There we go. And we find the um, this is called pass through fog animation. You will see I've already placed the animation events from my other projects. So disable collision right here. So right when you start the animation, you want to disable your colliders. And at the end, you want to enable your colliders again. You can even enable it like right here if you wanted to. That is a silly looking animation, but that definitely does the job. Okay. So I think right now we should be we should be good. Let's see if I'm forgetting anything. Uh, oh right right. We actually have to activate the boss fight too. So we're gonna say world event manager dot activate boss fight, and this is on the interact under the pass through fogwell script. So, because you're not going to hit the, the collider inside if you have no collision. Um, so you have to activate it with the script. All right, so here we go. Turning on the fog wall. And if I go up to it and I hit the action button, there we go. We jump through and the boss fight has become active. So normally this fog wall won't be up unless you bring it up, uh, you know, manually right now. But in the future, when we make our save screen, we're going to make it so uh, we're going to save world variables and events to your character's data. So if you die during the boss fight, the fog wall will be up right away. Otherwise, it'll only be up now if you start the boss fight by walking in. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is coming along very nicely. Uh, in the next video, we're probably going to add a second phase to the boss. And we'll get around to adding some more attack animations. And we'll also give the boss some poise so we're not just hitting him. And we're having him play the damage animation over and over again. So if you did like this video, please don't forget to drop a like. Leave a comment. does jingly help my video get around. And does help appease the YouTube algorithm gods. And if you're feeling like a total champion, check out my Patreon below. And I will see you guys in the next one.